begin 2024 with a trilogy. Jerome Hatch won the first meeting in Dubai. Marco Martignac won the rematch in London. Tonight, the Police Gazette belt is on the line once again. Will it be the Croatian warrior? Or will it be the man with the big power in that right hand who walks away with the belt? And Cub Hawkins faces off against Daniel Laurel for the 185 pound Police Gazette belt. Now we know every fighter from Wales brings it. We also know that Cub Hawkins is as confident as any man who has ever entered the Trigon. BYB is ready, here we go! Hi again everybody, I'm Mike Goldberg, joined of course, once again by my powerful partner, the Magic Man, the former two-time world champion. Only thing better than a rematch is a trilogy. Jerome Hatch, Marco Martignac, they meet again. Let's talk about Jerome Hatch first, Paulie, because that dynamite in the right hand is always a game changer. Not only is it a game changer, when it's like that, you're never really out of a fight. And we've seen Jerome Hatch, in, specifically against Marco Martignac, in a situation where it's not really going his way. That first fight against against uh, ha uh, Hatch and Martin between Mach and Hatch and Martignac was, you know, you see Martignac coming out boxing well, and then boom, that dynamite ended the whole fight. And just like that, I mean, it was a devastating knockout. So if anybody knows the amount of dynamite that is in Hatch's right hand, it is Martignac himself, and we've seen it in time and again with Hatch. When you're watching a Jerome Hatch fight, you can't take your eyes off the TV screen because whether it's going for him or whether it's going against him, he's always got the equalizer. And we do know that Marco Martignac has incredible boxing skills. A lot of mutual respect, but a lot on the line again tonight. Also, Cub Hawkins will fight for a belt for the very first time in his BYB career. The 185-pound Police Gazette diamond belt. Cub Hawkins has been nothing short of spectacular. This is something about Cub Hawkins, man. He's got that, for me, he's got that it factor. When he sits down and talks to you, there's, it's, it's almost like, sometimes you feel like something a bit off about him, but then again, it's something really on about him. You know, it's like, he gets in there and he performs, and it's almost like, it's just, it's in a weird way for some fighters it's like this, and I feel for Cub it is, the Trigon or wherever the combat sport is that you're fighting, it's your moment of peace. And for Cub Hawkins, it's where he's most happy. It, it, it's really it's something interesting. And he puts on some really, really good performances. And we know fighters from Wales always bring it. Daniel Laurel will bring it tonight. That for the 185-pound Police Gazette Diamond Belden. As always, our Hall of Fame matchmaker, Val Mel Valenzuela, making this roster better and better and better. So welcome to the monster. Oh, I'll tell you what, Yuli Diaz is a machine. You want to see the fastest knockout in bare knuckle history? <laughs> That's it. You want to know who Ulysses Diaz, Ulysses Diaz is? Just go check that out. The fastest knockout in bare knuckle history, and you'll know. That's what we brought here. We brought here tonight. The excitement comes to BYB. Cannot Always. wait for Yuli to make his debut, his first walk to the Trigon tonight. Our rules, as always, the unified rules, no three knockdown rule. Ten-point scoring system is in effect. Punching in the clinch is allowed. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight. Now, keep in mind, rules were changed a little bit last year. So, we had seven by three for Martin Yak and Hatch the first two times. Now, the men's title fights, six rounds, so six by three. And a pro debut means you can fight a maximum of eight minutes. And we have one of those on the card tonight. We begin 2024 in South Florida, inside the Charles F. Dodge City Center, as we are set for BYB Extreme 23. Our tail of the tape for our first fight of the night in the middleweight division, Matt Phillips, 32 years old, three years the elder of his opponent, Henry Williams. Both come in at 5'10", both able to make weight, both ready to go. To officially get things underway, let's get it to Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you all to the Charles F. Dodge City Center. This is BYB 23, Brawl at the Pines 2. The Knights bouts are being sanctioned by the Florida Athletic Commission. Executive Director is Timothy Shipman. We start the action, making his walk to the Trigon. Please welcome Henry Williams. Matt Phillips and Henry Williams.
Magic Man yesterday, Henry Williams, literally stole the show in the fighter interviews. He had everybody going with some of his jokes. The one thing he did make very clear to us, he has a nickname now, and it is not the Florida Gremlin, it's the Florida Gremlin. Yeah, the Florida Gremlin. Henry Williams entering the Trigon for the fourth time. The fight he took against Tommy Turner in February was on a week's notice. Just about a year ago, he said, I'm a fighter, I just want to fight. In his last fight at BYB 21 in Rock Hill, South Carolina, he looked outstanding against Jimmy Sandlin. Long, tall, relaxed, and had the greatest punch, the jab. He was much more durable there, too, and he was able to actually execute a game plan with Turner. It was uh, a fast, fast start with Turner. He was sort of overwhelmed. Never got really got going, but that last fight, you got to see a little bit of what he's got, and uh, you know, he's, he's actually a, you know, a pretty good fighter, crafty, and knew his way around the Trigon. Had a war at BYB 14, going the distance with Manuel De La Torre, and what Henry Williams called the funnest fight he had ever had. Even though, Paulie, he said he abandoned the game plan. He said, at that time, I need to use my jab and get inside. So you want to talk about the evolution? We're seeing it with Henry Williams. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you can see he does make improvements. He does get better and better. And, and it's been interesting because you would have got that first impression from the Turner fight. You would have thought, oh, this guy doesn't have a career here. But you know what? He's, he's gotten better. And he is now the Florida. I, I, he's going to tell me I didn't get it quite right, but uh, Vlada Gremlin, he is Henry Williams. His opposition, Matt Phillips. I always think of Arturo Gatti when I hear this song. Right? It, it was always, uh, what, this was his official walkout song. Matt Phillips from upstate New York. Babyface, 26 years old. On his debut when he defeated Paul Hills at BYB 18 in London, England, he said it was a good time. He said his style translates to the Trigon. It worked in his favor because he was able to use his slick boxing skills, Paulie, but also he liked that there was nowhere to go for his opponent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't run your way out of the Trigon. Now, uh, uh, you can only go down. <laughs> so if you got a guy who knows how to fight in front of you, you better know how to fight back because there's, there's nowhere to rest. Broke his right hand in the first 10 seconds of the fight against the Brit Paul Hills. So he said, I knocked him out by consistently jabbing my opponent's face and getting the finish at the end of round number three. Yeah, that'll do it. You, you, you got one hand, you gotta keep using the other one. You know something about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll develop your jab if you keep breaking your right hand, that's for sure. He definitely utilized it that night. Perfect bare knuckle record, looking to move to 2-0. and oh. Inside the mighty Trigon, he is Matt Phillips. First of eight fights on the card tonight. With our official introductions to get things underway, once again, here is Lupe. We start the action with this contest set for five rounds in the middleweight division. This is BYB 23 Brawl at the Pines 2. The action being brought to you by Buy So Clothing, Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply. Our judges scoring the action are Eliseo Rodriguez, Vicente Rodriguez, and Manuel Marquez Jr. In charge of the Trigon referee, Bobby Wombacker. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters wearing black with red trim on the scale. He registered an official 155 and one quarter pounds. Last time out, he had an outstanding performance. And tonight, this precise technical boxer returns to the mighty Trigon from Clearwater, Florida. 
the Florida Gremlin, Henry Williams. His opposition in the red corner, wearing solid white on the scale. He registered an official 159 and one half pounds. Tonight, this mild-mannered warrior enters the Trigon, looking to remain undefeated as a professional. Let's go, baby! Representing Elmira, New York, baby face, Matt Phillips! All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules in the back. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch him up if you want. Bobby Wambacher, our referee. Right over here. Henry Williams, right over here me, Matt. Matt Phillips to get things started. Fight. Here we go. Henry Williams, black and red trunks. Matt Phillips, the white with the white trim. And quickly, power punches to the body coming from Henry Williams. Yeah, Williams learned something in that Turner fight, too. He knows it's just to start fast. <laughs> that Turner fight, he took on that week's notice, Paul. He only lasted 37 seconds. For the last fight, he went the distance and earned a huge victory over Jimmy Sandlin. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Again, I, I feel like he starts a lot faster since that turn of fight. He not only is obviously in better shape for being able to have more preparation, but also I think he, he learned something. You get off to a quick start in some of these bare knuckle fights. You know, sometimes you can overwhelm opponents if they're not ready for it. Clearly, Phillips is ready for it, and we got to fight. Phillips, 3-0 and in his bare knuckle career, 4-0 and in professional K-1 kickboxing, 5-1 and in amateur MMA, so he doesn't lose very often. Henry Williams wants to change that tonight. He's trying to bring the pressure to Williams consistently. As Williams has gotten off some good shots and good, some good uh, combinations, but I think Phillips is trying to put that mental pressure and keep walking him down. Williams is crafty, though, I'll tell you. Nice little feints, a sharp jab. Back at middleweight against Jimmy Sandlin. Back at middleweight here tonight. See the blood, some blood already inside the mouth of Phillips, and of course a mouse on the left cheek. Which means we are officially underway. Oh yeah, BYB. You got that right. Some blood on the between the eyes of, uh, of Williams as well. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Good work in the corner. Henry Williams with his back on the ropes. Oh, good right Babyface got a right hand in there. Yeah, neither guy's given an inch, man. You know, they've both landed some good shots. And like I said, sometimes in these bare knuckle fights, you think you're tough, but then you get in there, you feel that bone to bone contact and see guys getting overwhelmed. But these two guys have landed and they are comfortable being in the fight. So this is, these are the kind of guys that are, it's more difficult to score knockouts over once they're in it and once they're uh, warmed into the fight, which now they, they clearly are. And you can see they both respect each other's skill set because there's a lot of technical boxing taking place here in this first round. Yeah, it seems like, oh, good combination on the counter there by Williams. It seems like Williams tried to see what Phillips had by starting fast and see if he could survive it. And once he saw up, Phillips, you know, could take it and also fire back, Fight. he said, okay, all right, I got to get back on my technical stuff. And of course, we talked about Phillips being a technical boxer and then, you know, in, when he broke his right hand and how his left hand, educated left hand, won him that fight. So, you know, clearly both guys have good technique. Good double jab right hand there by Williams. Seems he's got the more fluid jab, and I think it's been the difference in the, in the ground. Big shots late from Phillips. No throwing. Yeah, nice start on both guys. Really good start for our night here in South Florida. Under the eye again. See, the blood st starts out early. I'm not, it's on the counter as Phillips tried to get started, and Williams came back in a, in counter, in a co combination counter. Henry Williams, born and raised in Clearwater, Florida. Matt Phillips said he knows he's a tough season veteran when he talked of his opponent, a slick boxer, and we're in his backyard. Phillips wants to ruin the show, though. It's a pretty rough cut on the, on the lip of 
Oh, Phillips, man. Yeah. Left side. Both with cuts under the eye. Round number two. Black and red trunks for Ready. Henry Williams looking for his second Ready? BYB Five. win. Matt Phillips, white with the white trim. Oh, good. good start with the triple left hand, Paulie. Yeah, he went downstairs with it out in the last shot. Body head. Man, you can hear the contact right in front of our broadcast position. My hands hurt just hearing those punches, man. <laughs> I tell you, man. Bare knuckle and you're Stop, digging guys. in like that. Break. Step back. Fight. Williams will switch his stance. Comes out orthodox. He has stayed in that orthodox stance thus far. Yeah, that left hand has been more educated. I think, it's, again, it's been the difference in the fight. He, he has good variation to it. He goes upstairs and downstairs with it. Stop, Phillips guys. does try to Watch jab as well. Hands, it's right? just not fight. as smooth. And in the real key, the real growth in the last fight, as I talked about earlier, was the utilization of the jab. And it's something that Henry Williams worked on. It's something that Henry Williams was proud of. Oh. And he's trying to set it up yeah, again here. And create different angles for punches. Yeah. You saw Williams Stop. going now, jabbing, going to his right, and, and then set up that little Fight. short right uppercut. Landed a nice shot there on Phillips. Some great hand positioning on Williams. Going in both directions. Mixing, that, mixing those shots. Creative shot selection on the part of Williams. And it always keeps starting with the educated jab. And he switches into hooks at times, and both to the body and to the head, Goldie. First two bare-knuckle wins for Williams, Paul. He came in and combined hey, two minutes and 21 seconds. Counter right Four, hand there over the top of Phillips' five, jab. Six, seven, eight. You want to continue? Yeah. Walk over here. That's the thing, man. Right. I think, I think Fight. if anything, Phillips is going to need something over the top of, of the Williams' jab. Yes. Because Williams is getting too confident with that left hand. That jab is starting to bother Phillips more and more. And there's a huge mouse under the right eye of Matt Phillips, and that's that jab of Henry yeah. Williams. Yep. Great position battle here. Williams really, really, you can see Stop, the improvements guys. Williams has Stop. made, man. He has a real understanding, he's cognizant of Fight. where he's at in the trigon at all times, the position he's got to put his feet, when he's got to pivot, when he's got to step. Really impressed. Again, putting his hands together nicely here in round number two. Not for lack of trying from Phillips, but he is swelling up bad now, man. That right, that right, that right eye, man, is swollen from underneath, and you start to wonder if there's fingers. overbone damage. Yep. Dirty boxing. Phillips stays away from the clinch, though. Good right hand connects for Matt Phillips. Yeah, he's tough, man. He's sturdy. He's gonna stay in there. Well, you know, you talked about the experience Phillips has, but yep. so that, when a guy has that kind of experience. He's comfortable in all kinds of fights. He knows how to take a punch or two. He's starting, you know, having a decent last 20 seconds in the round. See the beginning of the round. Oh, a little right hook on the inside. Boom. Nice little counter there as well. That was the one that caused a knockdown. Very sharp from Williams. Great look at the handiwork of Henry Williams by our production team as we get things started from the Charles F. Dodge City Center in the Pines here in South Florida. Henry Williams, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, Sugar Shane Mosley, some of his greatest influences. He's also a huge Boots Ennis fan. As we continue, and the doctor will take a look at the damage under the eye of Matt Phillips. It is all over. Yeah, that swelling was bad. Yep. And I, you start to wonder if there's, you know, orbital okay. damage there, you know? And as you could tell, Phillips did not want the doctor to stop the fight. But fighter safety is always paramount inside combat sports, especially here in BYB. 
And Phillips, the vision might have been a bit impaired. And with that, you keep him safe. And Henry Williams gets the victory, his second straight inside the trigon. The doctor saying not a good idea. Bobby Wambacher says it's over, and Henry Williams able to celebrate. The Florida Gremlin with the win. With the official decision, here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after consulting with the ringside physician, referee Bobby Wombacker, calls a halt to this contest with an official time of two minutes, 59 seconds of round number two, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, the Florida Gremlin, Henry Williams. Henry Williams composed utilized the jab nicely once again and earns the victory coming up next adriana vukovic out of croatia makes her byb debut against none other than jamie driver and let me tell you it got very nasty at the official weigh-ins yesterday they fight next this is byb driver vukovic coming up next BYB Bare Knuckle returns to Biloxi at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum February 10th for BYB 24 Super Brawl Saturday. Championship weekend will be headlined by a pair of big title matchups. There's a storm warning on the Gulf Coast when DJ Linderman brings his belt to Biloxi and looks to defend the heavyweight title against Hurricane Ike Villanueva. Champion Brandon Slaughterhouse Burr and Harold Lightning McQueen face off in a rematch for the BYB Featherweight title and much, much more. Catch all the action. Visit BYBTickets.com slash Biloxi for tickets and information. Two title fights later tonight, plus the debut of Yuli Diaz. Our next fight, super welterweight matchup, our tail of the tape, the Red Queen, Jamie Driver, eight years the elder of her opponent, Adriana Vukovic. It is also a three-inch height advantage that goes the way of Jamie Driver. Got emotional at the weigh-ins yesterday. They are ready to leave it in the trigon now. Entering the arena, Adriana Vukovic. First fight since an MMA matchup. One year, seven months, and two days ago for the Croatian, Adriana Vukovic, highly decorated at home, three-time Croatian boxing champion. She also won a national Muay Thai championships. She has trained a lot at home. When you think about Croatia, obviously you think about marvelous Marko Martinjak in the main event tonight, but also the great Mirko Krokop. Adriana has traveled to train. She has trained in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at the great team up there. Tristar led by Faraz Sahabi, of course the home for many years of George St. Pierre. The great one. Cold up in Montreal right now. Yeah, they're, they're cold up there. We don't have that problem here, do we? We do not. Although, for here it was cold yesterday, but not Montreal cold. 
She's excited to make her debut. She said, I'd like to fight. She said, I'll see for myself in a couple of moments if I like fighting bare knuckle. Her opponent, Jamie Driver. The Red Queen, always willing and ready. She said, anytime, any moment, I'm always here, and I am ready to play. Jamie Driver coming off that title fight against Josette Cotton, in which Cotton won by unanimous decision. But a big change has been made by Jamie Driver. She went back home to her home state of New Jersey, and she found out, Polly, that she was having a lot of health and body issues. She changed her diet. She got, as she said, her hormones balanced. Everything was off kilter. So in two months, she got her weight down much more easily, much more healthy, if you will. And mentally, she worked on her mindset. She said she had a lot of anxiety before the Josette fight. She's meditating. We may see the best Jamie Driver in a couple of moments. Well, I'll tell you what, all that is positive, but I'll tell you what, a, a fight with Josette Cotton will make you have, make you reanalyze everything. You know? Yeah, that true. girl can hit. So you know what? Maybe that's what that's what Jamie Driver needed with, to reanalyze everything was a fight with Josette Cotton. Because Josette Cotton hits you so hard, it'll make you reassess everything. But it's kind of good also that Driver did go reassess everything and take care of anything that she may have felt did need to be taken care of. And she seems really confident for tonight. And who knows? We may have a new and improved Jamie Driver. Well, she says she will bring the best she has ever brought as she welcomes the Croatian to BYB with the official introductions once again, Lupe. We continue with the action here at the Charles F. Dodge Center. This is BYB 23 Brawl at the Pines 2. Once again, the action being brought to you by Buy Sell Clothing, Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply. This contest, five rounds or less in the super welterweight division. Scoring the action. John Rupert, along with Eliseo and Vicente Rodriguez, in charge of the action when the bell rings. Referee Samuel Burgos. Presenting first, standing in the blue corner, she enters wearing black with gray on the scale. She registered an official 147 and one quarter pounds tonight. This highly decorated boxer, Muay Thai and MMA fighter makes the leap into bare knuckle, making her BYB debut, Haley from Zagreb, Croatia, Adriana Vukovic. Her opponent in the red corner, wearing solid black, her official weight, 148 and one quarter pounds tonight. She enters the mighty Trigon, looking to showcase her speed and power as she returns to BYB action. The Jersey Girl, now fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida. The Red Queen, Jamie Driver. Yeah, but they won't, they, they won't I won't be able to see them. Fight scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Right, ladies, get yourself in the back. Obey my command and protect yourself at all times. Any questions? All right, we start with a great fight. Ready. At the line. I got you. At the line. Vukovic looking to touch hands. Jamie not having anything to do with it. Fight. And here we go. Oh, double jab right hand. And that right hand landed. Jamie Driver comes out quickly. They work in the clinch. Vukovic a world grappling champion, All right, stop, 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 many stop, golds stop, 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 as a junior, stop, stop. so working in the clinch, working dirty boxing, something she's familiar with. Big start for Jamie Driver, right in front of our broadcast position. I tell you, Driver is missing those shots. Vukovic is not making her miss them, so there's an opportunity for Driver if she shortens her shots up. Jamie Driver finishes Adriana Vukovic. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah! 
Yeah. Machine Blade Vukovic, with all the yeah, combat experience she yeah, has, or at least claims to have, seems very, very uncomfortable yeah. getting hit. Yes. You know, she said, I'll, I'll decide if I like bare knuckle when, once I get in there. Right? Well, I guess she didn't like it. She didn't like it because at because all. She reacted like somebody who hadn't been in many fights at all. Typically, you don't see that kind of panic. She could have took a knee. If, with somebody with her experience would know maybe taking a knee would give her a break and give her a chance to reassess things. She didn't see any of the punches coming. As a matter of fact, Driver missed a lot of big shots. It wasn't Vukovic making her miss. They just missed it. And then finally, they started landing, and uh, the fight was over. See again, you know, see a lot of misses. Look, driver missing, a lot much driver missing. And Bukovic is not making defensive moves there. So she's not making her miss there. So it was a matter of time before the shot finally starts landing. Bukovic still has not no clue how to defend herself here and just kind of turns her back into the ropes. Really reacted like somebody who maybe got into a fight for the first time in their life. And yet she's had a lot of fights. A lot of fights. According to what she said, right? Yep. A lot of fights. And her left ear is what she was holding afterwards. Yeah, I mean, class shown by both fighters here. She got hit with a punch. I mean, that's, 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 it doesn't tickle. Jamie Driver with the victory. That's a lot and of energy. a quick finish. A lot of energy from Driver. You got that right. To make this one official once again, here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, a series of unanswered blows obligates referee Samuel Burgos to stop this contest with an official time of 34 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, the Red Queen returns, Jamie Driver. Jamie Driver's debut was a 58 second finish tonight. She finishes her opponent in just 34 seconds. The Red Queen will visit with Carissa Maxwell. Congratulations, Jamie. You weren't supposed to be here, but you made it very clear. You said, anytime, any place, I will be there in the ring. So how does it feel being back in the Trigon and putting in such a stellar performance with a first round TKO? Amazing, yeah. It's, you know, coming back from that loss from Josette was tough. It was really a mental game. So for me to step in here tonight and do that just boosted my confidence even more and I'm happy and thankful for the opportunity to do this again. And since that loss, you've done a lot of lifestyle changes. You've changed your diet, you've changed your training. Did you see that impact your performance here tonight? Oh, 100%. If I didn't make those changes, we'd probably still be fighting, so, woo. <laughs> now, I think I know the answer to this, but the opponent tonight was supposed to be Josette Cotton. Of course, you lost to Josette Cotton, but I'm pretty sure you want that opportunity. So can we see you back in the Trigon with Josette Khan? Oh, absolutely. It's funny you say that. Josette and I have talked privately, and I'll make this publicly. She knows what it is. She knows what time it is. I'm coming for that bell at 147, my appropriate weight class, and I'm going to take what's mine. Can't wait to see it. Thanks. Back to you guys. Thank you, Carissa, and a great performance. Congratulations to the Red Queen, Jamie Driver, who Yes, fought for the belt at 154 against Josette Cotton. The win tonight, she'd like a title down the line. Coming up next, it is a middleweight matchup. Rome Black Hulk Lindsay faces off against that man, Sarab Manansian. Manansian. He comes our way from Armenia, grew up in Siberia, fighting out of California, about to go bare knuckle for the very first time in South Florida. The Black Hawk and Gulo is coming up next. Mike Goldberg with my powerful partner, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Malinaji, Carissa Maxwell. Great to be in South Florida, our first of many great shows here in 2024. Two men set to make their debut, set to walk into the Trigon for the very first time. Our tale of the tape for this middleweight fight. Rome Lindsay is 39 years old. His opponent, as I mentioned, born in Armenia, lived in Moscow, grew up in Siberia, and now fights under the tutelage of Colin Oyama, 
He is Sarab Manatsian. As he makes his debut, he is 5'6", his opponent 5'10", and they both come in under the contracted weight of 160 pounds. Here's Lupe. Making his walk into the arena, Rome Lindsay. Henry Rome Lindsay, and much like Quentin Rampage Jackson, Henry made it very clear that he's Henry outside of combat, but he is Rome when he goes in to a fight. Oh, the alter ego. The alter ego. It's like Q and Rampage, and Rome Lindsay comes in with a lot of confidence. Black Hawk, born and raised in Kansas, said he got his nickname from football. They said I was stronger than the whole Roman Empire. Also for a while, Paulie had the nickname of Nyquil. 11 years of fighting, he said, I've never backed up. I go forward, and that means the Trigon is perfect for me. Should be interesting, because guys in Siberia also don't like the Black Oaks. You've got that right. Should be an interesting one tonight. He's always loved boxing, greatest influences, Iron Mike Tyson, and the great Bruce Lee. Rome Lindsay, third bare knuckle battle, his first inside the mighty Trigon. His rival, Sarab Minasia. As you know, fighters have their time. Many of them end up being some of the all-time greats, Hall of Famers, but the coaches always seem to stay around. And since Manassian has moved to California, he has found Colin Oyama. He trained Tito Ortiz, former UFC light heavyweight champion, UFC Hall of Famer. The aforementioned Rampage Jackson. Rico Rodriguez, former UFC heavyweight champion, yeah, Abu Dhabi submission wrestling world champion. A lot of guys over there in California. You got all kinds of guys in the world, for the world of fighting. You move to the right place if you go there. He did indeed. These days, he's got the two-time champion, the first ever UFC strawweight champion, Carla Esparza, Alex Perez, Ricky Simon, and this man, who Colin Oyama has a ton of confidence in. And Sarab, when talking about the height advantage for Rome Lindsay, he goes, everybody I played is taller than me. <laughs> 256 fights in various disciplines. A Pancration world champion also has a combat sumbo background, which means if they get in tight and work the clinch, he's going to be good. And you know what? 256 combat fights. So he's like, you know, why not try bare knuckle too? What's what's an extra one? Yeah, exactly. Make it 257 and make it against Rome Lindsay on the smallest surface in combat sports. With the official introductions, Lupe. We continue with the action here at the Charles F. Dodge City Center. This is BYB 23. Brawl at the Pines 2, the action being presented to you by Biso Clothing, Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply. This contest, five rounds or less in the middleweight division, scoring the action we have. Manuel Marquez Jr., along with John Rupert and Eliseo Rodriguez, in charge of the mighty Trigon referee, Bobby Wambacher. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters wearing the camo trunks on the scale. He registered an official 160 and one half pounds tonight. This heavy-handed, battle-tested combat sports vets enters the BYB Trigon. Fighting out of Topeka, Kansas, the Black Hawk, Rome Lindsay. His opponent in the red corner, 
Wearing silver with multicolor trim, he weighed in at an official 158 and one half pounds. After an extensive international combat sports career, tonight, this former Pancration world champion makes his BYB debut. Fighting out of Irvine, California, the Wolverine, Sarah Gulo. Drop. All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules in the back. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up if you want. Bobby Wambacher, our referee, fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. We're going to go backwards, Go, Goldie. Yep. Who's going to go backwards? I don't know. I think they're both going to go forward, and maybe one fight. will fall. Here we go. <laughs> Rome Lindsay. Got the uh, kind of camouflage, trunks going, and then the gray with the flags, and a nice left lance quickly, not once but twice. But oh, double kill. Oh. Both went down. It's Rocky Apollo. He's saying he's like the old days. He's saying, "Come on, let's grapple." Six, seven, I don't think he knows where he is. He's asking eight, him to grapple. Like he's in samba. Nine, ten, that was almost a double kill. It was, was over. Wow, that was crazy. And I think Sarab has been in so many ground fights that he got hit so hard, he thought, ah, well, I'll just take him to the ground. Absolutely. And he told him, come, come on top of me, as if he was fighting on the ground. That was, why? And, and, and Rome, he called him Rome, that's his alter ego in there. Rome almost got knocked out himself. Dude, I, I'm still trying to process what I just saw. I, I'm sure everybody at home is thinking the same thing. That was wild. That was crazy. Okay, I need to baby. see the replay. You will see me well, four more fights. From the top, you actually, because you know what? Fight. It was such a short fight. We can watch it all over again. Oh, he walks into those shots. He's hurt right there. That was actually a knockdown. The ref missed it. Then they both wow. went down. <laughs> they, I, what caused it? That was quite wild, dude. They both went down. See, he's hurt here. Watch. See, he kind of goes down there. I don't know actually if he did go down. Actually, I mean, he might have not touched. Ah, uh, right at, at the ear, Polly. Yeah, but what did he get hit? What did Rome get hit with? Because he went down too. Was he just going down because he was still hurt from the shot before? Because he was going forward. <laughs> 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 and here's the celebration for Rome Lindsay. But you go into a certain mindset in something that you've done your entire life and his equilibrium was disrupted and Manassian wanted to the ground fight. He was like Damian Maya back in the day. I think his saying, come is, down his here. trainer's explaining to him that he was telling him to come yeah. he was on the ground. Oh. I don't think Sarab realized it. Maybe the Maybe ADCC the next. His trainer's describing it. Quick work for Rome Lindsay in his BYB debut to make hole. it official. Remember Here's that. Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bobby Wambacher reaches a count of 10 with an official time of 27 seconds of the opening round, declaring the winner by way of knockout. The Black Hole! Rose! <laughs> What's crazy? Yes, it was crazy. So Rob looked back at his corner wondering, how's that the, the announcement? He still doesn't know he lost by knockout, dude. The guy still doesn't realize he lost by knockout. He looked back at his corner. Did you see Lupe look back at his corner when, when Lupe said the winner by knockout? He's still, he's still looking. Well, let's check out the winner with Carissa Maxwell. Carissa. Congratulations, Rome. I've been dealing with Henry all week, and he's cool, and he's calm, and he's collected, and he's chill. But Rome is a whole different human being, and you brought it in the ring tonight. How, what was going through your mind when it wasn't even just a knockout, but it was almost like a double knockout there? All I could think about is I got in a car wreck in November 22nd of last year, and it was like, you'll never fight again. I remember that the beeps going and waking up and saying, you can't tell me I gotta stop. I'm the Black Hawk, baby. You can't stop me. I'm invincible in this motherfucker. You might touch me, but you can't handle my power if I touch you. And this is your first fight back since your car accident in November of 2022. You obviously put on a great performance, but how are you feeling? Are you feeling back to that same pre-accident shape? And can we see more of you in the Trigon? Y'all know how Bruce Banner did. He died in a car wreck and became the Hulk. Rome, Henry Lindsay died in a car accident, became Rome the Black Hulk Lindsay for life. 
You will see me for four more fights. I signed the deal with BYB. I'm coming for that number one spot, baby. Don't care who it is or who in front of me. I am the irresistible force, and I'm coming. We can't wait. Back to you guys. Carissa, thank you very much. Past training partners for Rome, Houston Alexander, Jake and Joe Ellenberger. And I'll tell you what, Rome Lindsay reminds me of a Houston Alexander in the way that he brought it and he finished it. And a big smile on his face. No lack of confidence as he recovered from a very serious car accident. And he's back fighting. Made some new fans tonight for sure. You got that right. I, I, I dig the image too. I dig that black hole thing. Yeah. yeah. 27 seconds of it. Coming up next, we go to the cruiser weights the Cuban crocodile he is set to move to 2 and 0 oh in his mind inside the trigon Jordan Fuentes as he welcomes DeWitt Dixon into bare knuckle fighting that cruiserweight fight here on BYB is coming up next BYB Bare Knuckle returns to Biloxi at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum February 10th for BYB 24 Super Brawl Saturday. Championship weekend will be headlined by a pair of big title matchups. There's a storm warning on the Gulf Coast when DJ Linderman brings his belt to Biloxi and looks to defend the heavyweight title against Hurricane Ike Villanueva. Champion Brandon Slaughterhouse Burr and Harold Lightning McQueen face off in a rematch for the BYB Featherweight title and much, much more. Catch all the action. Visit BYBTickets.com slash Biloxi for tickets and information. Diamonds and gold on the line later tonight here in South Florida as we continue from the Charles F. Dodge City Center. Mike Goldberg, my powerful partner, the former two-time world champion, Pauli Malignaggi and, and Magic Man. So far, it has been somewhat magical, but the best is yet to come, including the trilogy fight between Marvelous Marco and Jerome Hatch. We've had some dynamite already, and, and yeah. you know what? It's, it's not unusual for the, B, for the BYB Trigon to show that kind of dynamite, but in the main event, we are guaranteed that kind of dynamite. We've seen it. Martiniak is a terrific, terrific boxer, but he also ha does have some pretty heavy hands himself, and Hatch, of course, has just an, 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 anesthesiolo an, an anesthesiologist type of put-you-to-sleep power, so it's... Uh, it's one that we can certainly, certainly look forward to. But we've had we've had a lot of fun so far. We've seen some good, good shots, good, not good knockouts, good fights, and uh, including this last one. I, I mean, yeah. that was a first for me. I had to I had to watch that fight again just to figure out what happened. That was crazy. I, I still don't think that uh, uh, Sarab understands what happened. I mean, yeah. looking back after. I mean, I, I don't know that I would if that happened to me. That was crazy. <laughs> he's on the verge of winning by knockout and he gets knocked out, but his opponent went down too. It was Rocky Apollo, uh, but this time Rocky was able to win, but it was Rome. Cub Hawkins looking to capture a Police Gazette diamond belt, and I'm so excited about Yuli Diaz. Oof, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, these guys, Yuli Diaz coming here with, the, with his, his debut in BYB. Big, big reputation in bare knuckle and combat sports. Cub Hawkins has always been fun, has yeah. always been entertaining, and always has that s little something extra that leaves you wondering about him. Just what is this guy capable of? Well, tonight he's got a good fight in front of him. The fighting pride of the the 305, all those fights still to come. Right now it's cruiserweight time, our tale of the tape between Fuentes and Dixon. DeWitt Dixon out of Charlotte, North Carolina, three years the elder of his opponent. They have a identical 74 inch reach, even though Fuentes is the much taller fighter. With the official introductions, Lupe. Entering the arena. DeWitt Dixon.
To Witt Dixon, nicknamed the Crazy Cat. Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, fighting out of Charlotte, North Carolina. One of his training partners, BYB veteran Tyler Sigmund. He trains with Tyler in Greensboro, North Carolina. Started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in 2013 to stay in shape after his football days had passed him. After a few years of training with pro fighters, he said he realized he was able to hang with them, so he decided to try a backyard fight. And the rest, as they say, is history. His goal is to make it to the biggest stage possible at this point in his life. Tonight, he makes a big step into the Trigon. Grappling-based is what he told us in the fighter interviews. And look out for the left hook, because he said, that is my power shot. DeWitt, crazy cat, Dixon. His opposition, Jordan Fuente. Jordan Fuentes, the Cuban crocodile. He made his combat sports debut right here in this building in August of last year. And with the new unified rules from the ABC, it was a fight scheduled for four two-minute rounds. He was able to finish Boss Hawk Brandon Johnson 39 seconds in to that fourth round, and he looked very comfortable in doing so. That's what you call a good night. Successful, yes. feeling comfortable, getting the work in, and uh, getting the stoppage win. So we'll see tonight how, we, how his progression has come along here. Trains here in South Florida, born in Cuba. Desmond Green, Jomi Escoboza amongst his training partners as he comes in at 205.6, ready to go. Five threes if needed, but something tells me he does not plan on this fight lasting that long. He is Jordan Fuentes. With our official introductions of this cruiserweight matchup, once again, Lupe. We continue with the action here at the Charles F. Dodge City Center. This is BYB 23. Brawl at the Pines 2, the action being presented to you by Buy Sell Clothing, Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply. This contest, five rounds or less in the cruiserweight division, scoring the action. We have Vicente Rodriguez, Manuel Marquez Jr., and John Rupert. In charge of the mighty Trigon referee, Samuel Burgos. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters wearing red with white trim on the scale. He registered an official 202 and one half pounds tonight. This powerful MMA fighter makes the leap into the world of bare knuckle, making his BYB debut from Charlotte, North Carolina. d Dixon! His opponent in the red corner, wearing black with silver lettering, he weighed in at an official 205 and one half pounds tonight. This highly decorated disciple of the Cuban school of boxing looks to remain undefeated as a pro. Representing Isla de la Juventud, Cuba, El Cocodrilo Cubano. Okay, gentlemen, you got yourself in the back. Obey my command. Protect yourself at all times. Get over here. Get over here. Over here. Of course, over here. All right, we're good. Dixon right and Fuentes. Fight. Here we go. Black and red trunks for Dewitt Dixon. You're gone, Fuentes in the all-black trunks and teeing off early. Trying to land the big overhand, right? You see it, he's just missed it, but the way Dixon himself is trying to throw some big shots. He's a little wide with that right hand, but 
shooting big shot. Both guys looking to show their best. Big swing and a miss there, Magic Man. Yeah, even when two big guys are swinging like this, man, even the referee has to be careful. Good Dixon, swing. that grappling-based MMA background, a lot of head movement, but he's leaning down as he does so. Watch out for an uppercut, right? Yeah, but it, well, we'll see if uh, if the Jordan has the presence of mind to, to see it and throw it. Over the top with the right. Dixon, not a, kind of a slippery guy. Not a nice guy to hit clean. Well, he got hit clean there. That right hand kind of wobbled him a little bit. And he got hit again by a right hand. Fuentes. Jordan, the Fuentes takes a step to his right and cuts off the, the trigon. As Dixon tries to escape to the left, he may start to trap him. Anytime Fuentes attacks, you see Dixon moving and slipping away to his left. A, a, a subtle step to the right will take that away from Dixon and force him to go in a direction where he may not be comfortable defending. The much taller fighter is Fuentes, and, Dixon, and he's using it to his advantage thus far. Yeah, Dixon he landed a couple of shots there, though. Scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Fuentes, there's the uppercut. There it is. Presence of mind, check. Yep. DeWitt Dixon. Wants to land that big overhand right, Matt Serra style. Oh, there it is. Shot right there. on cue. Making me look smart. <laughs> <laughs> or if we were in Boston, it'd be smart. Smart. And he's giving a smile at him, too. Uh, if Wendell's make his life easier if he cuts off that, that try yep. down to the right, though. Take that step to the right. When Dixon is trying to move to his left. Right, stop, grappling stop. Out here. Okay, Dixon. Coming in at 202.6. Normally, he fights at 185. He's even fought at 170. But he wanted this opportunity to make his BYB debut. <laughs> Trying to avoid the bite of the crocodile here in round one. Oh, there's that uppercut again, Goldie. Fuentes sees it. His corner feels it. He might have even hurt us. Look for it again there, Paulie. Yeah. Good flurry late by Fuentes. Good round one. That was a good shot there. I got Dixon's attention a little bit, a little bit of a wobble after that right hand. But again, I'll keep reiterating, you'd like to see Fuentes take a step over to the right as Dixon is uh, trying to escape because it would force Dixon to go again in an opposite direction where he's not comfortable defending. That ability to slide over to the left has gotten Dixon out of a lot of trouble. And at times, it's even allowed Dixon to land some shots as, as Fuentes went chasing. You think you gotta give Dick Fuentes round one, but I, th I think he's making his life a little bit more difficult than he needs to. Round number two, Cuban Crocodile, Jordan Fuentes looking to move to 2-0 in the Trigon. He's in the black, red trunks for DeWitt Dixon, also making his BYB and bare knuckle debut. The debut, as I mentioned, for Fuentes was four by two. This fight, five three-minute rounds. Son Dixon trying to land that left hook he told us about. Yeah, well, Dixon, again, having the ability to escape, even if he's losing the fight, it allows him to create a little bit of space to try to load up some shots. And those shots at times have landed on Fuentes. They haven't had as much of an effect, obviously. Fuentes winning the fight, he's more consistent. But Fuentes just ends up, ends up, because he's allowing Dixon to hang around in the fight, he's, long, he's, he's, he's taking some shots for no, because of it. Fuentes started training when he was 11 years old. Amateur boxing captured a bronze medal in the Cuban Provincial Games. Looking to showcase his hands and move to 2-0 in the Trigon. 
Dixon's last fight about a year and a half ago oh, right was an MMA battle. He was on the same card as Yuli Diaz, who makes his debut here tonight. Midway point of round two. Oh, good shot there. Uppercut from Dixon. Yeah, and again, you're allowing Dixon to hang around. You're going to give him an opportunity to land these punches. The overhand definitely has some spice on it. You see, he almost turns completely uh, pointing the, that left shoulder at Fuentes, and then he tries to spin around and, and move away. So he, if Fuentes keeps chasing him instead of stepping over to his own right, you know, if he steps over to his own right, because Dixon is so bladed, it puts, it puts Dixon in a bad position, and he has to either move the other way or take some shots, you know? But Fuentes doesn't cut off the, the trigon that right. way, so it allows Dixon to continue to move that way, continue to try to stay bladed, where he's able to kind of slip, you will partially take the punches instead of taking them fully, and able to return fire because of it. And he wants to oh, counter some blood. blood coming flying out of the mouth of DeWitt Dixon. And that's why we cover ourselves here, Goldie. That's exactly so. right. Polly's always got us safe. Well, as safe as we can be. <laughs> Final 30 seconds, round number two. And you see now what happens, Fuentes. You let him hang around. Yep. You've been cut off. If you would have cut that, that, that thing off, cut, cut that uh, uh, trigon off, probably Dixon would be gone already. But now, he's still in here. Okay, you're winning. That's Fuentes is winning. But you know what? Now Fuentes has a cut himself. Dixon has Fuentes thinking. We got ourselves a fight. We exchange here. Some of those shots land, some of those shots don't. Bam. Oh. Going strong, going straight, but can't go straight back where you're squared up like that. You still got to remember to be fundamentally sound on that defense as well. In the fighter meetings, when asked about the height difference, DeWitt Dixon had a great answer. He said, his heart is not taller than mine. <laughs> as we move to round number three in this cruiserweight battle. Red trunks for DeWitt Dixon, making his bare knuckle debut. Oh, good right hand. Black trunks in the uppercut from Jordan Fuentes. In the trigon oh. for the second time. There's that left hook. And again, Fuentes going straight back, squared up. I never heard of a Cuban provincial competition, but, but I was just wondering, because the more I see Fuentes boxing, especially if he says he's coming from the amateur system of boxing in Cuba, it's very, very limited as far as what well, he should be. A lot of energy, and, and, and you know what? He's, he's winning this fight, but too many mistakes, too many, uh, too many rookie type of mistakes, uh, both on defense and on offense, in a fight where he's winning probably because of the energy. You know? right. This is second professional combat competition. As I mentioned when he was walking in, his first was against Boss Hog right, right here back in August. And with the new rules from the Association Boxing Council, the Unified Rules of Bare Knuckle, it was four minutes or four rounds, two minutes each. Right hand again. He's managed to be, be pretty consistently landing that right hand. But you see the way Dixon kind of rides with it. He's able to take some of the sting off it, and I think that's why Dixon is still hanging around, too. Dixon, 3-1 and one in his MMA career. One fight in 2021, three in 2022. Both guys kind of fatigued now, a lot of waiting. Well, we know Dixon didn't have to cut weight. <laughs> He's fought always a lot lighter. You got that right. Yeah, both guys get a little bit arm weary now, a little bit fatigued. You can kind of see the fatigue in their body language. There was a lot of missing going on before, so you would imagine now there'd be more and more missing. But again, Fuentes goes straight back, pulling back square with his hand down, taking unnecessary shots, or shots that, you know, he could easily be avoiding. 
Let's see if he looks for that uppercut again. The bob and weave is low. There's a there's a, a catch-22 for that uppercut, though, because Dixon comes up shooting these overhand shots. So if you go and shoot the uppercut, he, and he may go come up with all, shooting an overhand shot at the same time, that hand that you're, you usually be protecting yourself with is down throwing the uppercut. So it's a, it's, it's a catch-22 because Dixon does shoot up at times, so you got to time it right when using that uppercut. And I think the opportunities could be there because Dixon is also tiring, so it's a lot more tiring to shoot up and use that springing yeah. shot. Uh, when you're when you're a little bit fatigued. Working towards the end of round number three. Oh, again, Fuentes has this this habit of going straight back. And the battle will continue. So that was a nice little setup there from Dixon as he kind of stuck out the right hand. He wanted the reaction of, of, of Dixon to kind of pull a little bit, of, of Fuentes to pull a little bit, and then he could come with that hook. And there it is again. I think Dixon is realizing that the initial shot, Fuentes will pull square. Yeah. And then you can set him up for the second shot if you throw it, from, throw it behind him, which when he pulls back will be on the money. And I think Dixon is starting to see that. Because the, the initial reaction Fuentes always has is to pull back square, which is, again, a very, very rookie type of mistake. And he makes it consistently. So it makes me start to question what what kind of a of a am, a amateur boxing background he does have, especially in Cuba, where you have never seen these kind of mistakes. The corner of Jordan Fuentes said, "Show your heart, have some heart." And as I mentioned, Dixon said his heart is not taller than mine when talking about six one Jordan Fuentes. He's trying to set up what he called his power shot, that left hook. And you saw on the replay from last round, he connected on one occasion. He would like to finish the fight with that big shot. Nice jab there from Fuentes. Let's see a little bit more consistency with that as well. There it is. You see what he does? He just kind of sits back and waits on, kind of watches his work. Yep. He could kind of follow through instead of suiting a jab and then taking a step back. Don't be taking that picture. Don't admire your work, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Because you know what? Dixon is clearly tired. I mean, I saw his point this, really. But, I mean, Dixon is kind of there for a bit more than just a jab if you, if you know how to set it up right. But like I said, there it is. Again, the pullback on the initial shot and then getting hit on the pull. I mean, this is consistent. Instead of showing, telling them to have heart, they should be telling them some simple instructions like this in the corner. Like have some uh, lateral movement? Because he's lucky, Dixon. I mean, he's lucky. Go underneath the punches or step to the side instead of going straight back square. Or at least if you're going to go straight back, keep your hands up doing it. Right. And he's lucky Dixon is two weight classes below him who just came up, right? Yep. One of the opportunity, and he's still in this fight with a chance to win. Round number four, just about at the midway point. Fair knuckle again. debut for DeWitt Dixon. Again, that jab of Fuentes, where it's actually nice when he uses it, but you, again, you want to see him be consistent. You'd like to see him cut off Dixon, which he's not. So Dixon is able to circle the entire trigon while just trying to avoid a jab. You see the damage from the jab under the left eye that Dixon just wiped. Fuente is saying mouthpiece. Fuente's own mouthpiece came out. Yeah. He was jabbing. He didn't even take a shot there. Made it, made it to about the second row. Right back at it. One minute. Round four. Dixon, a purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But we haven't seen a lot of dirty boxing really at all tonight, and yeah. not in this fight. Yeah, they haven't been too close. And when they've been too close, the shots have been a bit too wide and not, and not compact enough. And Fuentes has basically won this round with just a jab. Right. And maybe his right hand is hurt. And oh, a nice little turn jab. Oh, no, there's a right hand from Fuentes there. Dixon went southpaw last round, Paulie, but it was for about eight seconds. And Dixon. back in orthodox here. Dixon's showing less and less as far as resistance is concerned. But Fuentes' attack is not consistent enough to get him out of there, so 
Just jabs, follow around the, the trigon, a few more jabs, pull back squared again. He's just lucky Dixon didn't throw any punches there. Yep. It's, uh, it's sort of a repeat, but a little slower as they get more fatigued. The jab has definitely landed on Dixon. Man, very animated in the corner of Fuentes. Yeah. But you always talk about it. You, you, you don't want pep talks. You, you, you want instructions. I mean, sometimes pep talks are necessary. Right, I mean, right. He's given instructions there, but I just don't know that the, uh, the instructions are, are what he needs. I mean, he's right. been jabbing all around. I mean, I don't understand how much more jab he's going to throw. I think there's a follow-up to that jab that can come because Dixon is very tired. I think, again, if you cut him off so Dixon can't keep circling around the trigon, you can, you, you're able to, you'll be able to follow up with that jab. I don't think, I don't think a lack of a jab was a problem. I think it's the follow-up to the jab because there's opportunity there instead of watching your work. And his trainer, former world kickboxing champion, so he knows a little something about finishing fights. Round number five, Dixon in the red, Fuentes in the black. Hey, stop, 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 stop. Will we have this fight go the distance? So Good push take. forward by DeWitt Dixon, Paulie. Fuentes at least made a miss there. He made the same mistake, but it just the punches came up short. He keeps that jab out there. He can keep Dixon out of range. Big swing by DeWitt Dixon. I, I, I can just see Fuentes, though, with a guy his size getting hit, a hit, go, pulling back like that. I mean, this is a, it's something that's definitely got to be worked on back when he's back in the gym. No, no, no. Stop, 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 stop. He's got a, his own face full of blood now in a fight that he's made a lot more difficult for himself than I think he needed to. And with the power of DeWitt Dixon, you know, we say it all the time. We talk about it in the main event, Jerome Hatch. Yeah. And especially bare knuckle, you're one big shot from victory or defeat. Yeah. <laughs> Hatch is a different level of power. There. He is indeed. Hatch it so hard, he might miss you, but the wind can knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be a great trilogy matchup for the double diamond Police Gazette trilogy belt. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one because you could see Martiniak has a bit more wrinkles to his style, but Hatch with so much devastating power. Oh, another right hand there from Dixon. <laughs> Every once in a while, he lets what there's no he's around, you know? He's a gamer. There's finally some wrestling here. You want some dirty boxing, Goldie? Yeah, there it is. Get it? Let's see. He has the grappling background. He was asked if he played other sports growing up. He said, yeah, but I was no good at any of them, so he decided to fight. Finally, you saw Fuentes didn't pull back. You see what he did? He yes. held his ground and hadn't covered. You see what a difference? And man, the... the the swelling under the right eye of Dixon is because of the effective jab of Jordan Fuentes. But also Fuentes is a lot of blood too. From the inside of his mouth, he's spitting up a lot of blood this round. He's made this one more difficult than perhaps it could have been. Yeah, blood literally leaking out of his mouth. His mouth is full of blood. He definitely made it more difficult than it needed to be. Final 10 seconds of the fight. It's swarming at the end. They go the distance. Undoubtedly, Dixon knew what was left in the gas tank. Went on a sprint late. Yeah, you know, Dixon, give him credit for trying to finish strong at least. I think he may have come up short in this fight, but he did. He, he let Fuentes, he made Fuentes work the entire time. He let him know he was there. Had some moments in it. Maybe even have won a round, maybe two. Um, that's also on the on the fault of Fuentes for you know not doing not being as complete as he should have been or as complete as he had an opportunity to be. But uh, I give Dixon credit because right when he was looking totally totally fatigued, he gave it one last go, yep. one last go at the yep. end. You know. And Bali, it was only 24 hours ago that we were shocked by judges scorecard. So yeah, yeah it, it could happen again. Yeah. I mean, listen, I. 
Dixon gave it a lot of effort. Um, Fuentes, I think, commanded more as the fight went on. Dixon, you know, got 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 a little something back because, again, Fuentes making too many mistakes on his own. It's one of those where, you know, if Fuentes was going to lose it, it was his to lose. It was right. his to give up, you know. And Dixon was going to give effort, but he was, was always going to be a bit smaller. But all those defensive mistakes Fuentes makes, I mean, you'd hate to see him against a guy his own size because he, that, that, that's the potential to go to sleep, pull him back like that, squared with your hands down. Judges have rendered their decision as this fight goes the full five rounds. Here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after going the distance here inside the mighty Trigon, all three judges turn in identical scores of 49 to 46 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. El Cocodrilo Cubano! Decision victory, 49-46 on all three scorecards. He gets the beautiful medal from Scott Burt. And the Cuban Crocodile is 2-0 in the BYB Trigon. Carissa Maxwell to visit with the victor. Congratulations. That was quite a performance, but I think it lasted longer than what we all expected. Were you surprised by Dixon's stamina in the ring? salida. Para un hombre como este, el trabajo se hizo y gané gracias a, al, al trabajo que mis profesores me, me trabajaron por seis meses. Fights get complicated. You work your jab, you move up and down, and thanks to the work I did with my professor, we got the victory. We had a very animated corner giving you a lot of advice in between each round. What was the biggest piece of advice you were getting from your trainers to help you counter the left hooks and the uppercuts that were being thrown by Dixon? Había mucha acción en la esquina. Tu esquina se estaba dando muchos consejos cómo evitar el gancho. ¿Cuál fue el consejo que te dieron que más te ayudó a combatir tu oponente? Trabajar mano adelante, constante mano adelante. Eso es un hombre. Perdón la palabra, pero eso es una jicotea. Los golpes se ven a un kilómetro. Y gracias a eso. Al final, los 30 segundos demostré que el boxeo cubano prevalece aquí en Miami y en todas partes de Cuba. Eso, eso. Fue un very tough opponent. Y gané con la mano izquierda, tirando pocas derechas. It was a very tough opponent, just very difficult. And I've demonstrated here that the Cuban boxing prevailed this evening. And uh, I won the fight with just my single hand. I won the fight with the jab. Congratulations. Back to you guys. Thank you, Carissa. Thank you, Lupe. And congratulations to the Cuban Crocodile. All right, the best is yet to come. Two title fights, the monster, Yuli Diaz, and one of the originals is coming up next. Rene White Boy Rodriguez is set to fight that man, the Venezuelan Gregory Cisneros, the legacy of God. And there is White Boy, the pride of Hialeah, Florida. He has been here since day one. He's looking to make a statement here at BYB Extreme 23. BYB Extreme, it all started in Dada 5000's backyard. And you know what? Rene Rodriguez was there. Our tail of the tape for this super middleweight matchup. 41 year old Rene Rodriguez against the 26 year old Venezuelan. Both are 5'11. White boy from Hialeah will have a slight reach advantage. Entering the arena, Gregory Cisnero.
from Sucre, Venezuela, Gregory Cisneros made his debut inside the Trigon right here back in August at BYB 19. Lost the fight to Rynell Riley, but it was a DQ where Cisneros hit a downed opponent multiple times. Yeah, kind of in that MMA mindset, away. though. Yeah. Nonetheless, it goes as an alley. Recovered from that with a 26-second finish of Eric Lopez in his last fight. He's fighting out of Chicago, Pauly. He says, I compete against myself. He's going to have to compete against himself and pretty and much everybody in attendance boy, tonight. And White Boy Rodriguez. Yeah, and White Boy Rodriguez. Who's here in attendance from Miami in yeah. the yeah. suburb of Miami. You got that right. But Cisneros can't fight, man. I mean, he's not a guy, uh, we know, we've seen him twice. Yeah. He's not been beat up because even the one in the fight he lost, he was DQ'd in a fight. He was on his way to winning. Wicked knockout in Rock Hill. Runner up for knockout of the night. His opposition, Rene Rodriguez. fought and won at Battleship 1. Competed in BYB 3, BYB 6, BYB 7 in a title fight against Jomi Escoboza. He returns to his home, the mighty Trigon, here tonight. White boy. Grew up in the system. He was a foster kid. He has overcome so much in his life. And now he is passing the torch. He just got approved with a program where he is going to be able to work with foster kids, with kids that have those needs yeah. that Renee had growing up, Paulie, and he's excited to do so. You can pay forward, right? That's where yeah. you, you really get to feel the true blessing of being able to do any of the work you do. And uh, by doing with this, despite his experiences by doing this, it actually makes it feel a lot more coming from the heart because he knows the experiences of these kids in the Park He is definitely the hometown favorite and he is the pride of Hialeah. Rene Rodriguez, here's Lupe. We continue with the action here at the Charles F. Dodge City Center. This is BYB 23 brawl at the Pines 2, the action. Proudly presented to you by Buy so clothing. Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply this contest. Set for a distance of five rounds or less in the super middleweight division. Our judges scoring Eliseo Rodriguez, Vicente Rodriguez, and Manuel Marquez Jr. in charge of the Trigon. Referee, Bobby Wombacher. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters wearing black with silver. On the scale, he registered a ripped and ready 163 and one half pounds. Coming off a spectacular 26 second knockout in his last performance. Tonight, this boxer and Olympic wrestler returns to BYB. Representing Sucre, Venezuela. El legado de Dios, Gregory Cisnero. His opposition in the red corner. Wearing orange with white trim, he weighed in at an official 165 and three quarter pounds. He has been in it since day one, ladies and gentlemen. The OG Backyard Brawler returns to the mighty Trigon, repping his people from Hialeah, Florida.
All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules in the back. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up if you want. We've always said Rene Rodriguez is a true showman, a legend here in South Florida. Spiritual, physical, emotional, and ready to fight. Here we go! Rene Rodriguez and Gregory Cisneros. Orange trunks for white boy, the legacy of God. Coming forward black and white. Quick hands by Rene Rodriguez in a knockdown. Six, six, Sucre tried to get that right back, but he walked into a Rodriguez flurry. And oh, by the way, Rene is in the best shape of his life. Down about 20 pounds from when we saw him the last time. Well, Sucre has a problem hitting guys when they're down. He's already been disqualified for this. Yep, he's gonna, he's gonna get a point deducted. Potentially. So he's been down. If he lost a point, that's so a three-point round already. Make yep. sure you're good to go. And I'm going to talk to Gregorius, okay? So I'm happy to come over here. You good? You need to dock? Got it. Got it. Doctor's going to take a look at Rene Rodriguez. That was right after the shot. It's unfortunate muscle memory, Paulie, mm -hmm. when you come from MMA. Yeah, but he's not the only guy that ever came from MMA, but he's the only guy that seems to always have this problem. So. No question about it. So the gotta, fight continues. You got to still get it figured out. I don't know if Lombacher took a point or if he's warning him. I know he took him to his corner for the language barrier so that his corner can give him a specific Ready? instruction. Fight. Let's see here. Looks like just a warning. Oh, watch your back of the head. Watch your back he of gets the head. A, now he's refereeing his own fight. I know I mean, but Rodriguez will pounce on any kind of emotion negatively shown by Cisneros. Good discipline by Rodriguez. Man, his hands look good tonight. Explosive. He's letting him go and he's making, making Sucre run right into the shots. Rene Rodriguez. Back in the mighty Trigon, Paulie. Yeah, he is back in the mighty Trigon with some fast hands as Rodriguez. For the first time in 860 days. Thing, man. Cisneros, we knew could punch, he's shown it before. It is all over! Gregory Cisneros by knockout! I hate to say it, man, but Venezuelans, no matter where they are, they always can punch, man. I don't know. Yep. I don't know. Them and Colombians and certain, you know, there's places in certain part of the world where this come, just they breed punchers. And the Cisneros, we knew already from the past, that it was, it was a puncher in his own right. His only loss was because he's hitting guys when they're down. Not an easy guy to deal with, especially. In this kind of in this kind of scenario with uh, with the uh, trigon, where you don't have a lot of places to go, you got to fight your way out of it. You got to go toe to toe. Rodriguez has no problem going toe to toe, but he ran into one. Take a look at it. Oh, you see a little short left hook. That was a short left hook, compact. And Rodriguez had you know basically went down the same. The same thing that had given him all the success and the cost of him the fight, which was that enthusiastic two-fisted combination. He falls in here. You see what he's doing? He's coming in square and kind of falling in. You got to still keep your discipline when attacking. You see he's kind of falling in, and he runs right into a short left hook. I mean, I tell you, uh, Cisneros threw that punch really, really short, and all the damage was done by Rodriguez walking into it. Very similar with the left-hand finish that he scored against Eric Lopez, and he does so tonight against Rene Rodriguez to make it official. Here's Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bobby Wombacher waves off the action with an official time of 1 minute 34 seconds of the opening round, declaring your winner by way of knockout, the legacy of God, Gregory Cisnero. That fight had a little bit of everything. I was going to say that was 94 <laughs> seconds of a lot of stuff. A little bit of fouling, uh, the momentum all for Rodriguez, then the momentum all for Cisneros. Here's Carissa. 
Congratulations. At first, you know, we saw a little bit of the same mistakes that you made in that fight you were disqualified from. So how were you trying to remind yourself, use that muscle memory to not hit when they're down, to take down an OG backyard brawler knowing that he's here in his literal backyard? Al principio de la pelea vimos muchos de los errores que habías cometido en el pasado, tirar golpes ilegales. ¿Cómo fue que te concentraste y dijiste no puedo cometer esos errores, especialmente con alguien con tanta experiencia y peleando aquí en su casa? Primero, me, pri, perdón, primeramente gracias a Dios. Mire, de verdad tengo, no sé cómo peleé hoy, tengo la pérdida de mi padre recién, no es fácil estar lejos y que un ser amado se le vaya en plena preparación que tengo en mi vida. Antes de morir él me dijo, dedícame esta pelea a mí. Y por eso tuve que trabajar bien contra un, un peleador experimentado como es René Díaz. Perdón, René. First of all, all glory to God. To be honest with you, I don't know how I even fought here today. I recently lost my father. It's so difficult to lose a family member being so far away. And right in the middle of my training camp, this occurred. And before he died, he said, dedicate this fight to me. And I believe that's the only way I was able to get a victory against such a tough opponent like René Rodriguez. Shows he fought with a lot of heart. Congratulations. Excited to have you have another win here in the Trigon, and we hope to see you back. Felicidades, peleaste con mucho corazón, esperamos verte muy pronto. Quiero también decir unas palabras al jefe Mike. Mil gracias, es una persona de buen corazón, me ayudó con lo de la pérdida de mi padre y de toda mi familia. Gracias. I'd like to thank a person that helped me a lot with the, the loss of my father. He helped me a lot during this training camp and just in life in general, so thank you very much. A thousand thank yous to you. Thank you. Back to the desk. Our prayers to Cisneros losing his father and his father looking down upon him tonight as he scores the victory, finishing Rene Rodriguez at 134 of the very first round. Still to come, the fighting pride of the 305, Yuli Diaz, his opponent, Richmond, Virginia's Mumia Abu Dayali, the Red Scorpion. But coming up next, the first of our two title fights, fighting out of Wales. It is Daniel Laurel, highly decorated in BKB in the UK. His opponent with the Police Gazette belt on the line is the Savage, Cub Hawkins, 3-0, looking to move to 4-0 and, and put some gold around his waist. The 185-pound title fight is upon us for the Police Gazette Diamond Belt. Lionheart from Wales, Daniel Laurel and Cub Hawkins are tail of the tape for this title fight. Cub Hawkins, 12 years younger than his Welsh opponent. He will have a slight reach advantage, but it is Daniel Laurel who will have the height advantage. Look at the weight too. Cub coming in at 179. Entering the arena. Daniel Lerwell. Daniel Laurel, there's the belt. Scott Burt holds it in his hands. Who will take it home? Daniel with his 13-year-old daughter, Freya. She was asked yesterday, what do you think about bare knuckle? And she said, scary. He was asked, is she a fighter? And Daniel said, no, she's too pretty. She's a dancer. First time in the United States for both of them, they attended Dolphin World. His nine-year-old son, Theodore, is autistic, and so he fights 
for his son, his family, and for a great cause. Eight and two in the UK, a two-time BKB world champion, the reigning BKB world middleweight title holder, and a six-time Welsh judo champion. His father, a very highly decorated judoka as well. If Lionheart is anything like the Welsh wrecking machine, not many in this world are like Perry Jones, but we got ourselves a fight. It is. Barry Jones is only one. That is very <laughs> true. When asked about his highly decorated unlicensed boxing success, we said, what is unlicensed boxing? He said, it is boxing that is not licensed. <laughs> well, self-explanatory, I guess, right? Indeed. His opponent, Cub Hawkins. I like ADC, ACDC tonight. You got that right. Hawkins usually fights at a lower weight class, Colton. He's doing this for the opportunity yep. to fight for the police. He has that title. 171 in his professional debut at BYB 10, 170 and a half against Garrett Call, 175 in his most recent win over Trevor Olison. No weight cut for this 185 pound title fight for the Police Gazette Diamond Belt. His opponent said this is the lowest weight he has fought at in five years. Trained hard for it. It's a great opportunity. The Savage with a big smile on his face until he walks through those ropes. He said, Julio Tenori beat me to the youngest champion mountain. So I'll be the youngest Police Gazette Diamond Belt <laughs> champion at 25 years old. Somehow always, I was able to spin always, that. He's always looking for those records, though. You Cubs, got you know? that right. I remember one of the early times we saw, we interviewed him. He said, who do you, who's you, who's you, you guys look most forward to watching in BYB? And when we didn't mention his name first, <laughs> he was very, very offended. And he yeah. said, that's my goal. I, I want to be the guy everybody wants to see. Well, he certainly makes a case for it every time he fights. That beautiful Police Gazette diamond belt on the line with the official introductions, Lupe. We continue with the action here at the Charles F. Dodge City Center. This is BYB 23 Brawl at the Pines 2. Being sponsored by Buy Silk Clothing, Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply. This contest, six rounds on the line. The inaugural Police Gazette 185 Diamond Title Belt. The judges scoring at Trigon side. John Rupert, Eliseo Rodriguez, and Vicente Rodriguez in charge of the action. Referee, Samuel Burgos. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters wearing blue with white and multicolored trim on the scale. He registered an official 184 and one half pounds. Tonight, this highly decorated international bare knuckle brawler is making his U.S. debut. From Town Hill, Swansea, Wales, Daniel Lionheart Lerwell. His opponent in the red corner, wearing gray with black trim, he weighed in. At a chiseled 179 pounds tonight, he enters his first title bout and also looking to remain undefeated as a pro. Hailing from Madison, Wisconsin, and now fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, the undefeated Cub Hawkins. All right, gentlemen, remember, get the instructions in the back, obey my command, protect yourselves at all times. Right here, let's go, let's go. Any questions? All right, we start when I say fight. Thank you. Get back. Title fight scheduled for six three-minute rounds. The Savage against Lionheart.
Fight. Here we go. White trunks for Cub Hawkins. The blue trunks. The autism acceptance logo on the trunks of Daniel Laurel. Laurel, eight and two in bare knuckle fights. Seven of his eight wins by knockout. Oh. Hawkins walked into one there. He's got to be careful. This thing about Hawkins, he's got a lot of pride in fight, taking this fight. He gets hurt there again on the inside. You mentioned Lowell had to lose a lot of weight for this fight. Well, yep. Hawkins is fighting at the heaviest of his career. He gets his respect there with a big right hand. And he's got Lowell's attention now. Good dirty boxing now by Cub Hawkins. And this is what makes Hawkins the savage. Yes. Because he doesn't care, he man. This is, a, again, one guy had a cut weight to get here. So, you can imagine he, how much he weighed, gained after the weight. Well, Cub, no well, weight cut at all. There's a big separation. You can see there's a clear size difference between both of them. But look, Cub with a sharp right hand now that has landed, and it has absolutely busted up the eye of Lowell, who had actually had some success early in the, or the first few seconds of the fight, kind of rocking Hawkins once or twice. Cub said in 16 fights, the worst he's had is a bloody nose. And he hit himself oh, oh. in that one. Well, he's busted up the eye of his opponent. Cub said, yeah. I need to keep moving. Yeah, he hit Lowell in this one. Uh, he's he's got to be careful not to start aiming for the right. same punch as there. He was trying to throw that right hand from too far away. He's probably going back to a, a, a simple sharp jab. Targeting that already wounded eye too, Paulie. Yeah, exactly. With the jab, he can do that. You want to put yourself out of position with against a big guy like Lowell, a big, strong guy. But Lowell is still still there, and he's still alive. He's, he's bothered by the eye, but he's, he's still trying to create something. A wrestler since age four. In eighth grade, a coach Don't called that, Cub in. weak, mentally weak. Said you got to have a little uh, anger in you. And he once stayed in multiple sports looking to win a police gazette diamond belt. Here tonight in South Florida. Go hold him. Cub is trying to get position with the hand. You see him trying to grab out and reach. Trying to figure out Lowell now not as aggressive as he was early on. That right hand has calmed down the aggressiveness. Oh, there it is again. Oh, oh great uppercut. What a combination by the Savage. Oh, big shot there by Lowell again. Because yeah. Hawkins was hurt. He almost went down. He just stayed up as he fell into Lowell. And this is what I'm saying. Lowell's natural size hurts of Hawkins every time he hits him. It's not the first time Hawkins has been hurt in this fight. He got wobbled a couple of times in the other corner, in the blue corner, before he was able to land the huge right hand that calmed Lowell down. But now that Lowell has landed that shot that almost dropped Hawkins, maybe Lowell has gained some confidence. Let's see if he goes back to that aggressive style. We saw how one shot can finish up a flurry. Listen, listen, stop holding. You can't hold. You understand? Let's go. Nice and clean. Let's go. In the last fight. Final seconds of the first. It's an interesting round, man, because Hawkins had some success, but so did Lowell. You're you're almost intrigued because a lot the uneducated eye might just give it to Hawkins because of the cut, but I'm telling you, that was a close round because Lowell almost had Hawkins down a couple of times. Here's that big shot, Paulie. See the shot that cuts Lowell. I think, where is it? Is it this Bam. one right there? No, that one's already there. Now that, that up, those uppercuts, so he was already cut. I remember that, that Muay Thai hold. He was already cut there. The right hand was when he was standing up. It was a clean right hand. This was later in the round um, when Hawkins had another pretty good salvo. But again, I mean, that was a, a salvo right there. Right after and this, right it after is all the, over, Paulie. It is the all doctor over. has waved it off because bad. of that bad cut. Yep. It's kind of a shame. I was actually intrigued by this yes. fight. Yeah, the way it was evolving, because Lowell had had some success himself, um, and Hawkins came really close to going down right here in his own in, uh, in uh, Lowell's corner. Actually, really, really, we fell into Lowell. If Lowell wasn't yep. there to hold on to, a couple would have went down. So, I mean, intriguing fight for both guys. Almost a shame that it has to end early. Of course, with the cut, it's really, really bad. But uh, I almost want to see a rematch. I, I was just going to say that to you. There's the doctor looking at it, and he's yeah. saying can't go on. Yeah, that was a really bad cut. I Very mean. bad. Fighter safety. Oh, and it's, it's, it's a big cut above the eye, underneath the eyebrow. Oof. Yeah, that is nasty. Raw meat. You got that right. Ouch. Marvin Eastman style. Cub Hawkins owns the 185-pound Police Gazette diamond belt, and I agree with you, partner. Let's roll it back, let him go again. But tonight belongs to the Savage as Lupe makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of the ringside physician referee, Samuel Burgos, stops this contest with an official time 
of 2 minutes 59 seconds of the opening round declaring your winner by way of technical knockout and now the inaugural Police Gazette 185 Diamond Title Champion the still undefeated Cub Hawkins a little hardware for Cub Hawkins Goldie yes indeed it's I mean, you can see the class from both men. Cub was looking to give some love to his interview. And Cub Hawkins gets the belt from Scott Burt, and he'll talk to Carissa Maxwell. Congratulations, Cub. How does it feel to not only be the youngest international Police Gazette title holder, but also the first champion out of Chicago and the first champion to come out of Wisconsin from training? You're just acquiring all the accolades tonight. What does this moment feel mean to you? Uh, God is good. Um, and thank you, everyone that came out to support. Uh, whether you see you came to see me win or lose, thank you. Um, Man, so many people doubted me. Um, but I'm from Chicago, I'm from the Midwest, and uh, that's why I have this belt around me right now, and man, I'm so, I'm so blessed. Thank you. And uh, I, had a, I had a coach, a mentor, one of Chicago's best uh, coaches to, you know, been able to corner a fight, pass away not too long ago, and uh, this fight's for him, her case. Wow. Let's look back at the screen and re-watch what just happened. Now, you had a streak of three KOs in the first three rounds of your first three fights here at BYB. Now, are we counting this as a first round knockout, even though it happened after getting the first round? Because I kind of feel like we should after putting on, just continuing the streak in the way that you did. It doesn't, but uh, I'm right with you. Uh, this, is a, this is absolutely amazing. Um, I have all the confidence in the world. I've never doubted myself. You know, I'm just on goal. Like, when they talk about that dog, I feel like I'm him, I'm that dog. So, you know, I'll be back. Uh, eight, 185 doesn't have a BYB uh, champ. And uh, Chad Kelly, I'm coming for you, dog. Now, we've never seen you in the second round, so I'm sure after the bell rang, you were getting ready. What was going through your mind when you're like, yes, I'm finally going to get to fight in this second round? Because I know you said that, that getting that experience was important to you this week. Yeah. Uh, right when that, that bell rang and I was coming back, I was like, damn, I wish I, wish I would have ended that in the first round. Um, he hit hard. I'm so thankful that he came all this way. And uh, what he's fighting for um, with the... Uh, Autism is, is th thank you, Daniel. Yes, thank you indeed. He is fighting for his son and he did put on a great show. But now, of course, we are going to see you back in the Trigon. Is there anybody that you have your eye on? Oh, oh yeah. Um, if you're from 185 to 160, I want, I want both belts, international, BYB, from top to bottom. Chad Kelly, I want him at 85. 175, I don't even want to say his name. I know he's in here. I might jump the ring and go attack him. Jose Fernandez, fucking rack. I'm coming for him. So those, those are my two. Sounds like it's going to be a good time. Congratulations on your belt, on keeping the streak alive. Back to the desk. Carissa, thank you very much. Off camera, the goat is saying, uh, I'm not a rat, I'm a goat. In attendance here tonight, but the moment belongs to Cub Hawkins. Congratulations, as he has that beautiful 185 pound Police Gazette belt. It is time for the fighting pride of the 305 to make the walk to the Trigon for the very first time. The monster, Yuli Diaz, set to take on Ali the Red Scorpion, Mumia Abu Ali, coming up next.
Welcome back to South Florida. Mike Goldberg, the magic man, Paulie Malinaji. Happy to be here as we welcome Yuli Diaz to BYB. Our tale of the tape for this feature co-main event. 42-year-old Diaz against 43-year-old uh, Mumia Abu Ali from Richmond, Virginia. He is taller. He will also have a four-inch reach advantage to bring him in. Once again, let's go, Lupe. Megan is walking to the Trigon, being joined by internationally renowned hip-hop artist JT Money. Uli Dia. Professional boxing victories by knockout include his bare knuckle career and 16 of 17 glove and bare knuckle wins combined have come by knockout Pauly nine of those for Ulysses Diaz in round number one one of the most exciting fighters in combat sports and the knockout record says it it's toughness uh, fan, big fan base uh, you can tell here by the reaction he's getting here tonight in Florida uh, a big reputation and uh, a big signing for BYB we're looking forward to seeing what he can do here the proud Cuban born and raised right here in South Florida in Miami so my style has always been boxer brawler you said I guess with my aggressiveness I have that Mexican style <laughs> not the only Cuban who could relate to that Blessings to Yuli's 10-year-old son, Yuli Jr. He just beat cancer at the young age of 10 years old. Had a tumor in his femur, but he's good to go. So much love to the monster, his family, and way to be tough, 10-year-old son, Yuli Jr. They're all dancing here in the house tonight. His rival, Mumia Abu De Ali. Represent Richmond, Virginia, the home of former WBC heavyweight champion Oliver McCall, who he has trained with in the past. The Atomic Bull, 59 wins, 38 by knockout. Last fight for Abu Dhabi Ali was against the new 185 pound champion, Cub Hawkins. His only fight inside the Trigon, it was his pro debut at BYB 10. Looking to move into the winner's column tonight and silence this very, I would say very excited and biased crowd here for the fighting pride of the 305.
It is our co-main event of the evening. Once again, official introduction from Lupe. We continue with the action here at the Charles F. Dodge City Center. This is BYB 23 Brawl at the Pines 2. The action being presented to you by Buy Sell Clothing, Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply. This is our co-main event of the evening. Five rounds or less in the cruiserweight division. Score the action. Manuel Marquez Jr., John Rupert and Eliseo Rodriguez. In charge of the action, referee Samuel Burgos. Presenting first, the fighter in the blue corner. Wearing black with red trim, he weighed in officially at 182 and one half pounds tonight. This aggressive counter puncher looks to test his medal inside the BYB Trigon. Fighting out of Roanoke, Virginia, the Red Scorpion. Mumia Abu De Ali. His counterpart in the red corner, wearing black with gold trim, he weighed in at an official 185 and three quarter pounds. He started from the streets and now he enters the mighty Trigon, an MIA combat sports legend. Tonight, Making his BYB debut, repping the 305, the monster, Uli Diaz. All right, gentlemen. Let me get it in so the back of him, I'm to take it all time. Like, fight is going to start from both corners. So, fold it right here in the corners. All right, when I say fight, the fight goes. Any questions? Any questions? We go. The monster and the red scorpion in our co main event of the evening. Fight! Here we go! Man, they come out quickly, and there's a right hand that connects. It's like a street fight. He came out flying. Big time. No, 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 no. That was a push. How about the alley get pushed down? Yep. A lot of those big punches missed, and that's why somebody's still standing. <laughs> the bug bowl guys are still standing. Oh, Diaz yeah, with right. the big left hand. How about the alley smartly takes a knee to recover? After going down, of course. See if that enthusiasm has been knocked out of him, though. He was very enthusiastic to return fire to Diaz when Diaz was shooting all that fire back at him. Good flurry from Diaz. Cut. Ali. Diaz is cut, too. Yep. Well, he's punching a little bit wide, but he lands that big shot there. Go, 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 go. Slip. So you want to be a bare knuckle fighter on the smallest surface in combat sports. Oh, the alley just weirdly took a knee. The referee had not counted it a knockdown, but he, he took a knee there. I was thinking the same thing. So that, now, even now, he has got to call it a knockdown. I mean, the first time when he went down, okay, it was smart, but... And he goes down again. And it is all over! Just like that! Yuli Diaz! Dominant in his BYP debut! A little scrap though, didn't last long, yeah. but you know, listen, man, they, they both threw it down. You know, uh, uh, I give up with the only credit because you know, it can be a bit intimidating fighting Luis Ulysses Diaz down here in South Florida where he's got all this popularity. This crowd is going nuts and they all kind of surrounded the Trigon. And he came out flying himself with that momentum. And I put the Ali, I give him credit for uh, you know, kind of returning fire and then doing his best in there. Didn't work, but you know what? He, he went at it, and you know, even Diaz is giving him that respect. A little scrap for as long as it lasted. You see the martial arts and the mantra of class in combat this thing afterwards, started. but man, it started. I mean, it was a firefight, Polly. I mean, he was, Diaz was trying to break his own record. Yeah. You know, the fastest knockout in the bare knuckle history. He came out trying to get that right away. And he backed up the Abu Dali. Once Abu Dali went down once, I think he was a little bit overwhelmed. 
kept trying though, because now that you you know you see the cuts on on uh, that was the push. That was where it was no knockdown, but then he got up and took a knee. Yeah. And so then he ended up being counted as a knockdown. But uh, Abu Ali, give him credit for returning fire and opening up some cuts on Diaz as well. And a proud moment for Yuli Diaz, his son Yuli Jr. in the Trigon, as he is victorious. Here's Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after close observation, referee Samuel Burgos determines that the blue corner can no longer continue, obligating him to stop this contest with an official time of 1 minute 13 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, repping the MIA, the monster, Uli Dia. His wife, Dana Brooke, superstar in her own right, his son celebrating victory inside the smallest surface in combat sports. Good looking crowd in attendance tonight, and they all love the fighting pride of the 305. Here's Carissa Maxwell. Somebody make sure we get Lewis in the ring, please. Lewis. Lewis, come here. This may have been your debut in the Trigon, but I think I speak for almost everyone in attendance when I say welcome home because that was one hell of a performance. Let's hear it up one more time for the fighting pride of 305, Yuli Diaz. How does it feel to officially make the Trigon yours and to come back as an OG who started before the promotion even started to finally come and say, this is my ring, this is my space. How does it feel to you? Listen, there's no better feeling. I want to, you know, I want to tell everybody here, we just, I just fought a harder battle than any battle we could fight in this ring. You know, I got my 10-year-old son, just beat cancer. He gave me the willpower, he gave me the warrior spirit to get in here today. I also got Lewis here today that's fighting cancer right now as we speak. Lewis actually came from the hospital, from treatment over here to support me. Thank you so much, Lewis. You gave me so much power and so much energy. I want to thank my opponent, Mumai Ali, who came over here to Miami, to my backyard, in front of all my people, and stood here and fought to the death for me. Much respect to my opponent. He's also a father. He's also a man just like me. You know, he is my opponent. He is in my backyard, but you got to show this man respect. He got in here and gave it everything he got. So thank you so much. Thank you, BYB, for this opportunity. It's amazing to be part of this organization. These are real stand-up guys behind the, you know, that do business in this, in this promotion. And I appreciate it more than any words to describe. And congratulations to Cub Hawkins. Uh, I heard that uh, Hawaii somewhere in the future for BYB. It'd be great for me and Cub Hawkins to dance in Hawaii. So let's make it happen, guys. Amazing. Who wouldn't want to fight after that? Congratulations. Back to the desk. There's his son, the 10-year-old, Yuli Jr. And it, it was interesting, Yuli said, you know, he, he had a rough, you know, upbringing. He, he's gone from villain to role model, and now community work in abundance. As, I mean, look at that shot right there, Paulie. It puts, it puts life in perspective. Yeah, absolutely. You start, you, you start to prioritize what needs to be prioritized. And, you know, uh, he has made a great point. You know, he just fought the, a tougher fight than any fight inside the Trigon or inside no of the ring or inside of the cage could be. And that's, that, you know, to have to live through his son fighting against cancer, my 10-year-old son fighting against cancer, no less. And uh, congratulations to his son, Lewis, that beat cancer and uh, wishing him to a uh, continued healthy recovery. And uh, we're happy to see the, the embrace of Abu Dhabi and uh, Ulysses Diaz as well. He's he's very popular. He's, he's got a lot of support here in Miami. He's a lifelong Miami, but also a, a real class guy who, uh, you know, nobody around the Miami area has anything bad to say about him. You know, because even in your own hometown, sometimes people don't like you. But Ulysses is, is loved by everybody in Miami. He's a big fan favorite for a reason. He's a stand-up guy. Stand-up guy, great father, great supporter. And our prayers go to that young man as well. May he have the same successful recovery and as that. Yuli Jr. I say that because, you know, even in New York, these guys don't like me too, believe it or not. It's hard, it's hard to believe is that. Hard to believe. But in Miami, you won't find somebody who doesn't like Lewis's man. 
And I didn't think of it until he said it, but Cub Hawkins and Yuli Diaz? Yeah. Wow. Well, Cub was calling out everybody. So That's it's true. Like, all right, I'll, I'll take the challenge. All right, the trilogy, our main event of the evening, coming up next. Jerome Hatch, he won fight number one in this Police Gazette international affair. He won in Dubai. That man, the Croatian, marvelous, Mirko Martinyak, won fight number two in London. They will settle the score and see who wins that big belt in our main event here on BYB 23. BYB Bare Knuckle returns to Biloxi at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum February 10th for BYB 24 Super Brawl Saturday. Championship weekend will be headlined by a pair of big title matchups. There's a storm warning on the Gulf Coast when DJ Linderman brings his belt to Biloxi and looks to defend the heavyweight title against Hurricane Ike Villanueva. Champion Brandon Slaughterhouse Burr and Harold Lightning McQueen face off in a rematch for the BYB featherweight title and much, much more. Catch all the action. Visit BYBTickets.com slash Biloxi for tickets and information. We ended 2023 with a great trilogy matchup between Patty Juarez and Monica Medina was the first time in the 143 year history of the legendary Police Gazette diamond belt that there was a double diamond belt. And that is what is on the line for the men tonight in our main event. Our tale of the tape for this title fight, 37 year old Jerome Hatch against 33 year old Marco Martinyak. Six inch reach advantage for the Croatian. He is the taller fighter. They are 1 1. Who will win game three? Entering the arena, Jerome Hatch. Always making Superman proud with this one. Will you? Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it's the fighter's anthem. I, uh, all fighters love this song. Yep. <laughs> the Hall of Famer Roy Jones Jr. And the fact, that's exactly it. The, and the, it's not only a good song and pumps you up, but the fact that it's also Roy rapping it yeah. gives it that little extra point. Jerome Hatch. Both men have made a lot of adjustments and cerebral decisions in their preparation for this third fight. Hatch said he was focused in the second fight of getting that power shot off again. He should have been more patient and set it up. Marco had a good game plan. Now, Marco said in the first fight, Pauly, that he was, he was teeing it up. He had knocked Hatch down multiple times with a jab, and so he got a little full of himself, Yeah, and he got caught. And Marco can punch a little bit, too. It's just Hatch is like a nuke. Yeah. You know, that, that right hand is a nuke. You know, so, you know, I, I think, you know, Marco, and they both learned a lot about each other in the first two fights. I think both would agree that Marco is probably the better technical boxer, so I think Hatch has to be a bit more deliberate in his attack uh, without letting Marco get comfortable with, in, in, in his boxing, uh, because that that powerful, that, that good boxing can turn into some powerful punches combinations while well, at the same time Marco knows what happened when the, the dynamite does lane so at the same time he's got to stay very disciplined you're always on high alert when you're in the trigon against hatch because the because the trigon is constant action so you don't have a lot of places to play it safe let's see if he can't be touched tonight by the man who holds the belt what do you got the defending champion Marco Martinia
Napoleon said if he had 10,000 Croatians, he would rule the world. Marco Martignac has been very relaxed, very comedic the last few days, but he's all business as he walks into this third fight against Jerome Hatch. Getting back to the storylines of the matchup, he straight out said, I got cocky in Dubai. He thought he would finish the fight quite easily. He said nobody had gone down for my jab in like 400 fights. <laughs> and then boom, that big right hand blew everything up. Yeah, he thought it was all too easy until it wasn't. Yep. And you know what? Why not? Make the, the third fight on the third different continent they fought. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Exactly. Dubai, London, now the Pines in South Florida for the first ever double diamond Police Gazette trilogy belt. First ever for the men in the 143 year history of the legendary Police Gazette. Patty Juarez claimed it in Denver for the women. Will Hatch or Will Martignac claim it tonight in our main event of the evening? Here is Lupe. From the Charles F. Dodge City Center, this is BYB 23. Brawl at the Pines 2. Once again, the action proudly presented to you by Buy So Clothing, Galloway Group, GC3, and Miami Lux Detail Supply. Tonight, we complete the trilogy, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare to be entertained. Your main event starts now. On the line, the Police Gazette Double Diamond 205 Trilogy Belt set for six rounds or less. Scoring the action, Vicente Rodriguez, Manuel Marquez Jr., and John Rupert in charge of the action. Referee Bobby Wambacher. Introducing first, tonight, he enters the Trigon as a challenger and fighting out of the red corner. He enters wearing black with silver trim. He weighed in at a solid 203 pounds tonight. This powerful knockout artist looks to recapture the title. The former Police Gazette champion fighting out of Lehigh, Utah. The Hatchet, Jerome Hatch. Across the trigon in the blue corner. The defending champion, wearing white with orange trim, he weighed in at an official 204 and one half pounds. The self-proclaimed emperor of BYB looks to solidify his championship reign tonight, defending his Police Gazette 205 title and making his U.S. debut out of Zagreb, Croatia. Marvelous, Marco. All right, gentlemen, this is the main event. We've been through the rules in the back. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up if you want. Third time, no touch from Jerome Hatch as we get set this time at 2.05. Over here for me, Jerome. Fight! Here we go! Jerome Hatch said he's worked on his patience, his movement. He knows he does not want Martin Yak to outbox him again. Can't just depend on the power. And Hatch is trying to fly in through the front door again. He's got to be careful because Martin Yak knows to set that distance. You see, he knows how to step back and can maintain the range he wants. Just misses the big right hand there, does Hatch. Oh, but oh and a big right hand from Martin Yak. That's the thing. Martin Yak can punch going backwards. He may not punch as hard as Hatch, but he punches. And he can punch in both directions. More versatility to Martignac than, than to Hatch. And that's why Hatch has to be careful trying to fly in through the front door like this. That was the definition of when you chase the knockdown, sometimes you get knocked down, even knocked out. Well, that's what I, I mean. He said he can't let Martignac outbox him. But again, you, you not allowing Martignac to outbox him means smart pressure. And, and trying to fly in like this, and he get caught in the shots. Yeah, Marniak has a good shot selection. He's, he's smart, he, he, he knows how to set up his shots. He's got good balance. And again, he knows how to punch going backwards as the two knockdowns are proven. Over here. 
The fight continues. Now the Hatch can't even come forward anymore because he doesn't have any legs. Look, he's kind of just standing there. Yep, and there's a lot of time left in our first round. You see, Martinek's still kind of careful, trying to close the gap himself, though, you know? Yeah, he'd rather walk Hatch into shots. You see, when Hatch goes backwards, he's kinda, you can kind of actually see Martinek is a bit more careful. And Hatch doesn't know how to get away, though. That's Man. the thing. This is becoming an assault now. Yep, landing in an extremely high percentage. And that is the thing you notice even in the first two fights. Martinek is a much better fighter, but Hatch is a much harder puncher. But the deficiency in, punch, in, in, in punching ability is not as big as the deficiency in fighting ability. Martinek is a much better fighter than Hatch is as a puncher because Martinek himself can punch well, and he's showing it here, and he's showing it in, in the fights, in the previous fight as well. That one, not and a knockdown. And even in the first fight when he dropped him with the jab. Now Hatch trying it with the southpaw stance, but again, if you got a big right hand, I don't know what the southpaw stance is going to do for you. Oh, Marniak has to be careful not to throw the punches. Yep. When good Hatch job by Bobby Wambacher stepping in. Yep. Oh, good for the hook right hand. That was a nice setup. Hook right hand instead of coming up the middle. He shot the hook around the side. It is all over! Marvelous Mirko Martinyak finishes Jerome Hatch, and he captures that beautiful <laughs> double diamond Police Gazette trilogy belt and knocks down his trainer in the process. And he throws his mouthpiece in the crowd too. Yes. <laughs> I guess he doesn't pay what a lot of guys pay for those. And my mouthpieces used to be right? expensive. I wasn't throwing my mouthpiece in the crowd. <laughs> Just spectacular. Boxing, yeah. 101 yep. from Marco Martin. Yeah, and he can go box backwards, forwards. I mean, you can kind of see when he sets up in his stance. He's got very good balance. He's very well schooled. You know, he knows his way around. You know, this is a guy with a lot of experience in multiple combat sports. You know, so he he knows his way around, and and he's very very comfortable in bare knuckles, shooting in both directions, and uh, very very confident as well. And you can see it in his body language when he's in there. He was very, very loose. He was out here. Hatch punches much harder than most, most yes. anybody, but he, he doesn't have an adaptability in terms of being able to set it up. He's just trying to shoot it and hoping that it lands. And, and, and instead, Martinyak can set you up going backwards, forwards, very well balanced. He's never, he's never fallen forward the way Hatch is. Good body shots there as well. That actually hurt Hatch as well with those body shots. We didn't notice that in live action, but we see that that's why we got our great production team in the truck showing us these replays. Good shots here as well from Martinyak. And Marniak doesn't smother himself. Does he makes sure not to get too close and not to get reckless where Hatch can shoot something really hard. You see, he's closing the gap. He takes a half step back and then closes the gap again just to make sure he get, can leverage his shots. Dominant performance by Marco Marniak. Jerome came out aggressive, looked and, to and land that big right hand. And, and Goldie, two of these three fights in this trilogy have ended in one round. Yes. <laughs> yep. The mighty Trigon. The mighty Trigon, you got to bring it. And he certainly did tonight to make it official. Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, the accumulation of punishment forces referee Bobby Wambacher to stop this contest with an official time of 2 minutes 21 seconds of the opening round, declaring the winner. By way of technical knockout, still, Police Gazette 205 champion, the marvelous one, Marco Martinia. Game three belongs to Marco Martignac in impressive fashion. That's game set match there. You got that right. Rivalry. Scott Bird even gets a hug. <laughs> when you're happy, you want to hug everybody. You got that right. Carissa, it's all yours. Marco, congratulations. I know this opportunity meant so much to you to come here and fight for this belt. What does it mean to make history as the first trilogy winner of the Double Diamond Police Gazette belt? I just confirmed that I am the best pound for pound fighter in my category. And if somebody wants a piece of me, let's go! Earlier this week, you told me that this is a dream come true for you to not only come and fight for this belt, but this is not only your U.S. debut, but it's your first time here in the States. So seeing this crowd, even though they might not be in your favor, how has this experience been for you to fight in the BYB card here in the States? First of all, thank you, Miami! 
thank you for having me up. And God bless you. So I'm very, very happy. I, you know, I, I was talking that I'm the best, and I confirmed this with this fight. I was training six months. I was physically in the best shape ever. Thanks to my coach, Ivica Ivic. Thanks to my girlfriend at home. Thanks to my parents. Uh, I, w I have to say something on Croatian, but he wouldn't see. Štef i Vale, kak sam obećal, titula je tu, sveta nam rođena noba doma. Jerome said at the press conference that this fight shouldn't even happen, that the second fight shouldn't have ended the way that it did. So, what did you do differently to secure the win, to leave no doubt that you are the champion? I didn't rush like a first, yes. This fight shouldn't happen because I rushed in Dubai. That I didn't rush. We don't have, we don't have a trilogy. But I'm happy to share. There is no bad blood between me and Jerome. This is all, you know, uh, hype before the fights. His fans, my fans, ah, everybody talks shit. And that, that, that is just for marketing, and I, I have no blood for Jerome. I'm inviting Jerome to come to Croatia for camp, training with me, sparring with me and my boys in uh, my coach's gym. Every fighter who wants to come to train with the pound for pound, the best, should come to Croatia. Well, congratulations, we all witnessed history tonight. It's been a pleasure. Back to you guys. Carissa, thank you so very much. He told us in a previous conversation that Roy Jones Jr., he believes, is the best boxer who ever lived. Longtime friends with Mirko Krokop. Marvelous Marco said the only time he's been scared was the first time he sparred with Krokop. Tonight, quick work of the hatchet, and he makes bare knuckle boxing history. Marvelous Marco Martignac with the takedown, too. What a way to start 2024. Marvelous Marco Martignac making bare knuckle boxing history with that beautiful double diamond police gazette belt. We saw Cub Hawkins with a big win. And man, Yuli Diaz made a statement. Oh, did he ever, man. A great first round stoppage of uh, Abu Dhabi and a good two way scrap. The fight didn't last long. But listen, Abu Dhabi wasn't overwhelmed by the big support of Uli Diaz and the uh, reputation he had. But ultimately, it wasn't enough to overcome the uh, big punching power of Uli Diaz that he's known for. Cub Hawkins, again, another stoppage. This time got to the end of the first round. Yeah. We didn't quite see him get, to, get into the second round. But nonetheless, this one was really impressive. He's always impressive to me. But this one is extra impressive because Lawal is so much bigger than him. And Lawal is actually a, a good puncher at yeah. a higher weight yeah. class. And you you could see he was hurting Cub every time he hit him, but Cub was undaunted. He managed to stay in punching range, uh, uh, not, didn't get scared of fighting that punching range, and was able to land enough big punches to eventually get the stoppage with that huge cut he opened up with that sharp straight right hand. And all that said, and all that power, and all those great finishes, Rome ruled in the Trigon tonight. Rome Lindsay with the knockout of the night. I mean, that was crazy. I, 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 I might have to watch this fight a couple more times just to figure out exactly how it went down. But we know one thing, a big shot there, right there, that big right hand was all she wrote. The, he was so stunned, was, was, uh, was, uh, uh, Sarab. Yeah. Sarab was so stunned that he still didn't know what's going I don't know if he still knows what happened and what hit him. When the announcement happened, I think he thought they were going to announce something else. Yeah. And then when they said he got stopped in one round, you look at it in this corner like, what? What? Yeah. what? He, he got hit with a huge right hand. He said, hey, come on. Come to my garden. And I, I, we went, wait, I think the, that doesn't exist here. I think the last thing he saw was Rome getting stunned. Yeah. And he, I think he was on the verge of stopping Rome. And then he doesn't remember anything else. Well, Rome ruled surprise. Supreme with knockout of the night. Our fight of the night was an entertaining one. Maybe for Jordan and Fuentes, he made it more entertaining than he had wished, but DeWitt Dixon was in the fight. Yeah, yeah, Dixon hung tough. I thought Fuentes could have ended this fight earlier, but you know what? If he ended the fight earlier, then it wouldn't be fight of the night. So you know what? Good for him. And so they go the distance. Fuentes moves to 2-0. Dixon, we hope, will be back, maybe at his more natural weight. 
and you love a man who has the courage to step in out of his weight class, taller guy, goes the distance and awarded our fight of the night. That one with Jordan Fuentes and DeWitt Dixon. And, and, and so that's just perfect. But Cub Hawkins and maybe Yuli Diaz in the future? I, I, you know what? We hadn't thought of it. The club was calling out everybody and their mothers. And you know what? We hadn't really thought of all the possibilities of all that of that call out. And then Julia said, all right, I'll take it. A nice couple, couple played them, but I, if I were calling people out, I don't think Yuli would be the first on, on know, my that, list But either. Cub is just crazy enough to do it. And Uli, of course, is crazy enough to do it as well. Indeed. The Magic Man, a wonderful night. Jamie Driver with a big finish. It was a night full of great action inside the mighty Trigon. Cub Hawkins, Yuli Diaz, Marco Martignac put on spectacular shows for Carissa Maxwell and my powerful partner, the Magic Man, the former two-time world champion, Paulie Malinacci. Mike Cooper saying so long until next time. We see you right back here inside the Trigon.